Welcome to Issues. As you know, Issues is a program for the community. We interview and talk to individuals who are making some co contribution to the community. This evening we have with us Jerome Wilson. He's an attorney with one of the firms here in Bermuda. And for the next few programs, we're going to be looking at success. What does success mean? Is success attainable for everyone? And what about those who are failures? We'll find out over the course of the next few weeks. Jerome, thank you for being with us. Thank and, you for having and, me. And welcome to Issues. My first question to you is, at what age did you decide that law would be the way that you wanted to earn your living? Well, I can't really pinpoint to a specific age. I, I've just always known that or I always remember or recall that I wanted to be an attorney um, ever since I was very young. Um, I think it had to do a lot with, you know, as a youngster, I would always try and, you know, explain myself to my mom and dad, even in inappropriate situations. So, you know, the older people like to say you're talking back. <laughs> but um, I would say that I was just trying to explain my point of view. And from that, um, you know, my parents said, well, you need to become a lawyer or people would say you need to become a lawyer. And that sort of uh, resonated with me. And then from there, I started to find out more about what it was about. And, you know, I just thought, you know, this is something that intrigues me. Well, I didn't have those specific thoughts, but I thought it was something that I'd want to do. And so I, you know, looked into it as I got older. And um, here I am all these years later. Now, did you have, in, in growing up, did you have any examples of someone who was a, a lawyer? Or did your ability to talk back, and I know you have some West Indian roots in you, yeah. so your parents really didn't appreciate <laughs> what they call talking back. Yeah. But did you have some uh, examples in, in your life, someone that you saw that was an attorney? Um, not on a day-to-day -day basis. I do did have an older cousin, and still do, who is an attorney. and uh, But I you know, didn't make contact with him, and I didn't really speak about it with him. Um, it was very much, this was something I wanted to do. It was always in the back of my mind. I did other things um, before I actually started and became a lawyer. And so, um, no, the answer to that question is no, I didn't have anyone to bounce ideas off of until later on. Once I actually got on the path, I was able to connect with a few people um, who were older than me mm -hmm. and ask questions. And then it was just basically just getting experience um, with them um, and you know, then taking it further. Now, as you look back at your education, I believe part of which was done in Bermuda and part in, in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. What kind of student, student were you academically? Are, are you the person that, yeah, there goes Jerome, you know, he's gonna get all the A's and we won't no. get that much, but he gets all the A's. No, I would say I, I, I made good grades. I didn't, I wasn't a, a straight A student. Um, I would just say I was one of those students who was above average. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't the, I wasn't going to be the, the most stellar student, but I got good grades. I'm not going to lie. I got good grades. I passed all my exams and, I, you know, I had weaknesses. I, you know, math wasn't my favorite subject, but I did well. And um, the sciences probably as well weren't my favorite subjects, but I did well. And so I was one of those students who... And, and I guess as an adult, I just do what I need to do, and I w was successful in that. Can you recall some of the A levels and O levels that you did while you were in, in, in yeah. high school? Yeah, I did all the main ones. So the sciences, geography, history, um, language, uh, literature, um, you know, a couple of business courses as well. And all, all said, I did about, um, I did eight or nine, sorry, subjects and I passed eight. So I did fail one. Um, so I wasn't a complete <laughs> success. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was me. You know, I was always the student um, who was, you know, my, my fellow students knew that I was going to do my work. Um, you know, we all got into trouble as, as kids. You know, I wasn't perfect, but uh, when it came to school, my parents especially um, instilled that um, work ethic and that you had to at least pass your, your, mm -hmm. your grades. You can do whatever you want, um, in both me and my sister. My sister is, you know, just as successful as I am. And it's... And your sister is? She's a doctor, a medical doctor. So, you know, we both had that, um, you can do whatever you want to do, uh, but you just need to get good grades. Okay. Now, you mentioned parents. In, in, in terms of success, 
What role, if any, do parents play in the success of a child? Uh, they play a vital role. I think they play probably the most important role. Um, teachers are there, you know, but parents are, are there for, for, for through it all. And they set the tone, um, at least uh, in my opinion. In my house, you know, the tone was very much, you know, you do your work, and, and after that's done, then you can consider um, doing something else or, you know, relaxing. Mm -hmm. But then there was also times and as a student, you know, you're not, there's no relaxation for you. It's, you know, you do your work, you get your, you get your eight hours sleep, you get up early, you go to school, you, you pay attention. And, you know, that the parents, my parents at least, had a very um, structured t uh, environment and, a, and a, a very solid tone for us to, to, to work uh, under, me and my sister. Mm -hmm. And so I think parents play a, a vital role in, in setting uh, and, and ultimately how students or their children children um, turn out to be successful. Now, they don't, they're not the, uh, the end all and be all. I mean, some parents are really good at it and their children still um, are, you know, end up where they end up. And other um, parents, they may not, they may be a bit lacking and they're still, they're stu their kids are still very successful. But by and large, I think that parents play a vital role in, in setting the tone for students. Mm -hmm. Now, as you look at grades, you said you were an above average student. So as you look at one's grades, uh, are, are grades a determining factor in success that leads to success? No. No? Absolutely not. I, I absolutely said, not? No. Grades. So good grades really doesn't matter as, as one looks at becoming successful? No. Well, here's, what, here's where grades matter. Grades get your foot in the door. Okay. Grades will get you a scholarship. Grades will get you into school. Grades will get you into better schools. Mm -hmm. But grades are not going to just make you successful. If, if, if your measure of, of success is getting grades mm -hmm. and getting good grades, then you will be successful if you get all A's. But if, if that's not, if you're looking for something more, if your measure, whatever your measure of success is or whatever you, it is you're, you're looking to achieve, grades, I think, will help you to get to that in, in a sort of academic sense. So what I mean by that is that you don't have to be successful um, and get good grades. There are many people who are successful in life that had poor grades. They just had through true grit or through other means were good at other things and turned that into success. Um, if you're looking to, to to get a success through the academic world, so you want to become a teacher or anything that requires a degree, then grades, I think, are important, but they're not the end all and be all of that. If you make poor grades, um, uh, then, you know, it, it's not it's not a total, it's not a total, it, all is not lost is what I'm trying to say. But I think it's important to make good grades. There are a bunch of teenagers who might be watching this <laughs> program. Like, Mom, Dad, did you hear what Mr. Wilson said about grades? <laughs> what yeah. is your definition of success? Give us your definition of success. Well, in my, in my particular, um, my definition of success is I look at, well, let's frame it in the context of my job. My definition of success is having all of my colleagues be confident in my ability, being able to rely upon me and knowing that when they ask me to do something, when they give me to do something, it's gonna be done exactly how they want it, if not better, or the job is gonna get done. And also in this context of um, relation relating to clients, because we're, as attorneys, are in the service industry. People don't think about it like that, but we are servants. Uh, we actually have to- Charge a lot of money for, those, for the service. Well, that's, <laughs> that is true, but we are in the service industry, and, and part of that is success also also is um, having our clients be satisfied with the job that we've done and helping them to attain the result that they want in the end because that's really what it's about. You go to a doctor, you want to get well. You go to a lawyer, you want a specific result. And that's what we, uh, that's how I um, measure success. It's not, you know, in terms of, um, you know, physical things. So I don't, I, I'm not measuring in terms of having a house or, you know, how many, how much money I have or anything like that. It's mainly what confidence I can instill 
in my colleagues and my clients and I think that's to me the most yeah. I noticed that, that your definition of success focused on your job uh, in terms of how your colleagues and the clients the confidence that they would have in you yeah and that's how I framed it you yeah. know, I framed it in terms of my job now if you're talking about um, overall life mm -hmm. you know that's, a, that's how long do we have you know <laughs> we can sit here and talk about success and the nuances of it um, for a, a long time but I guess in, in terms of life you know you know we life success is for me it's very simple you know it's having a good family life having a good spiritual life and making sure that um, in the end of it all when it's all said and done I am going to be in heaven and my family as well okay. so that to me would be success in life let's let's move back to the the, the, the path to becoming an, an attorney and I know there are two systems the American they have a system and the British they have a system you went through the British That's British right. system mm -hmm. so after high school and did you graduate from high High school here in Bermuda or in the West Indies? I graduated from high school in the West Indies okay. and then when I completed uh, my graduate uh, when I completed high school I took a like would say a gap year and then after that oh, what, I, are, what's a gap year being out of school for a year yeah basically being out of school for a year and say you know some people it's a it's a I think it's more of a European thing. Some mm -hmm. people in, in the Europe and in America as well, they choose to travel. What did you do? I worked. <laughs> <laughs> I worked. And so that's what I was going to say. Some people travel, some people work, some people uh, do other things. But I didn't go straight into, oh, sorry, sorry, I apologize. Well, after I finished high school, I went straight into college. After I finished my first degree, then I took a gap year. Oh, okay. So I, I apologize. No, I, I, I was getting ahead of myself. But yeah, after high school, straight into college, I did a four-year year um, degree, a bachelor's in computer science. At the time, that was something that was, um, uh, this would have been in 1998. Yeah. So well, well, let, me, let me back up. You said you did, uh, you got a four-year degree mm -hmm. in computer science, a bachelor's degree. Yep. But is that the track that most um, uh, British countries go in terms, okay. No, it depends. So, I mean, I guess we can focus on that. Um, getting a law degree from the British citizen system has their various avenues. Okay. There's no, there's a traditional way, and then there's a non-traditional way. Yes. Let's just let's say you went the non-traditional way in terms I, of the British system. I did do the non-traditional way. So let's say that the traditional way is not say it is mm -hmm. tr the, the traditional way is a three-year law degree, mm -hmm. after which you do a year either training as a solicitor or training as a barrister. Uh, define those terms for a solicitor and barrister. So a solicitor is basically a lawyer who's going to deal mostly with contracts. Which and, is you. Yes. And um, and uh, sort of, uh, they're a not in court. Okay. That's the easiest way to cover it. A solicitor is any attorney that's not in court on a regular basis. Yeah. A barrister is someone who's going to be in court. They wear the wigs. They wear yes. the black gowns. Yeah. That's, that's the main distinction for the purposes of our discussion. Um, and then so after you do that uh, 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 one year studying to be a solicitor or a barrister, then you can go on to become a an attorney once you finish that course, mm -hmm. and then you do what is under the British system is you qualify, which means you have a two year trainee or apprenticeship uh, period um, with a firm or with a chambers for barristers, and after that period, and then during that time, you know you're doing the same thing, you're you, you're shadowing basically mm -hmm. uh, a seasoned attorney. And for a period of sometimes six months, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. It depends on the firm. Mm -hmm. And um, once that is uh, completed, you qualify. So you get called to the bar. Um, well, you get called to the bar for as a solicitor and for a barrister actually and I you know I should have said this from the beginning they qualify um, immediately after the bar school that's just how it is oh. but then most of them go on to apprenticeship as well afterwards so it's a little bit of distinction I don't want to confuse people um, but it's it's that's the traditional route mm -hmm. the non-traditional route is um, if you have a, a, a first degree so a bachelor's or, or any um, graduate level degree. Um, you know, let's hold it right there. We're going to take a break and we'll come right back. We've been talking with Jerome Wilson, one of the uh, attorneys, an attorney in one of the firms here. And we've been looking at success and we've been even, even asking him to track his success uh, in terms of education. And we will be right back with more questions for Jerome Wilson.
Welcome back. We've been talking with Jerome Wilson, an attorney in one of the uh, law firms here in Bermuda. And we're going to go right back. We will pick up on um, the educational path that one takes in terms of qualifying to be a lawyer. And uh, we found out there are two terms. There's a solicitor and there is a barrister. And we have just asked them to just tell us the difference in those terms, barrister and solicitor. And after uh, the law degree, we're told that there's a two-year stint, but just to find the terms again for us, please. So, sure. So, um, a solicitor is someone that is not in court and is dealing mainly with contracts, and it, in the American slang they, or vernacular, they would be a corporate attorney. Okay. Um, and that, that covers, well, I shouldn't say corporate, that covers, um, you know, trust, property, all, as well as corporate attorneys. A barrister is someone that's primarily in court. They were the Whigs, they were the Black. They're the most vi vis yes. vi uh, you know, vi visual uh, of, the, of the, the two because everyone knows the, what people yes. in the Black and the uh, Whigs. Um, but was, as I was explaining, there are two different paths. The first path is a traditional route, which you know covers uh, three years of school, uh, and then a year of finishing school, I'd say, or barrister or, or bar school or LPC school, and then um, after that you enter the workforce. The non-traditional route, if you have a graduate uh, degree and you um, would like to become a lawyer, you don't have to necessarily do the three-year course. You can do what is called as the GDL, which is the Graduate Diploma in Law. That is a 10-month course. It's an accelerated course where the law, um, the core elements of law are condensed and given to you on an accelerated basis. Mm -hmm. Now, off the air, you had mentioned the term conversion. Would this, yep. be, this, would this be a conversion? That's another route. Um, I don't know if that route is available anymore. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people, when I started, the GDL was kind of new, and so they still had these conversion courses, which was like a is in between both, where you did instead of a three year course, you did a two year degree, a master's, then that would qualify you to do the LPC or the bar course if that's what you wanted. And I've used the term LPC; it's legal practitioners course. I think they call it something else now. But that's what I did. By the way, they they still have the conversion course. My my son, okay. who, who's Bermudian, but an attorney in the states. Uh, his mother and I wanted him to come to Bermuda, <laughs> but he did take a look at some of these conversion courses. Okay. Um, looked at Canada. There is something in Jamaica, and okay. uh, and obviously you can go to England and do it. So okay, at least I didn't know of, that. As of a year ago, they still had the conversion courses. Okay, well that's what I did. But um, the the two main ones, if I was to do it all over again, I would do the GDL. And if I was telling someone right now and who has had similar qualifications to me, do the GDL um, because it's shorter. Mm -hmm. It's instead of two years it's a year mm -hmm. or 10 months yeah. and then it you go right into once you're successful in passing it mm -hmm. you go right into um, the bar course or the the um, solicitor course and so it could take two years or it could take basically four years traditionally and condense it into two but the only way that you're eligible for it is if you have a qualifying degree already so that means you've already done four years or another course so it tends to be for people who are more mature um, and have uh, you know a little bit more um, wear on the tires in terms of, of school. Now as, as you look at someone like you who went the non-traditional way mm -hmm. as compared to someone who went the traditional way that's uh, your, your law degree right after high school do you feel that one path uh, prepares you better than the other um I wouldn't say so. I mean, there, there are pros and cons to both. Um, but I think you know, the path you take is the path you take. You know, there's, and that's the beautiful thing about life. No two paths are the same. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of different paths that can get us to diff the same place. I think, you know, for me personally, the path I took was good because it gave me a chance to sort of find myself and do something that I liked, uh, but necess not necessarily wanted to do for the rest of my life. And then after that, I was able to um, continue on and do uh, what I really want to do for the rest of my life. And I, you know, I'm, you know, pinching myself because I am, I am, I am doing what I wanted to do. And I um, don't, you know, if if it all ended today, meaning I wasn't able to work as an attorney anymore, I would be content because I have been able to do what I wanted to do from, you know, I was young. Some some parents might say, well. That's the expensive route. <laughs> 
spend four years in college, then go to law school, and you could go in straight in. Your, yeah, it is, well, well, you know, well, that's, you know, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it is, and and you know, like I said, I, no two paths are the same. You know, I took the, the I, I graduated from high school very young, oh. and that was the system. What, how old were you? I was 16. 16. So, you know, I don't think yes. at 16 I was prepared mentally or, or in any shape or form to go straight into a, a, a degree outside of, uh, of the country yeah. where I was living, because that's what I'd have to yeah. do. And so I did a four-year course where I was. It was at home. You know, I was still under the, the watchful care and, and guidance of my parents. And so um, by the time I started at my LP, uh, my my law uh, studies. I was still quite young, mm -hmm. but not 18, 19. I was like in my early 20s, and so um, it's just the path you take. You know, if you're graduating, I have a colleague now in the office um, who graduated uh, from a, a school locally and uh, went straight into their um, degree, and is doing quite well. You know, and and at the tender age of 22, 23 is a lawyer and, you know, is, you know, on the per starting their career for the next 20, 30 years of their life. So, you know, it, it there's both sides have, have their pros and, and both have their cons. And I think that if I was giving advice to a specific person, you know, do what works for you. I know one might be more expensive than the other, but that's something you have to take into consideration in, as to what works for you. Is, is success attainable for everyone? I think so. It depends on what their uh, view of success is, though. You know, if your view of success, as I said before, is having material things, then um, you can attain them, but they may take longer for you to get to because, you know, it depends on what. Usually when we talk about success and material things, it's the more finer things in life, the things that cost more yes. money. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I can say my, my, my I'm successful because I have a, 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 a bicycle, you know, <laughs> yeah. and everyone would laugh yes. and say, well, anyone yeah. can have a yeah. bicycle. But it depends on what your goal is and, 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 and what it is that you want to have. So. I agree. I think yes, absolutely. Success is attainable for everyone. You just have to reconfigure your views and your desires around that success. Can failure um, hinder success? If one is a failure, does that mean success is not achievable or attainable for that person? Well, I mean, what is a failure? <laughs> you know, there, there, there's. I don't know if anyone is really a failure until they die, mm -hmm. um, and, and even then that's debatable. And so can failure hinder success? Um, it can make it better, it can make it sweeter, it can make it um, you know, uh, more real. Mm -hmm. um, failure is a part of life, and I think that we sometimes need to fail at some things in order to appreciate the other things now even you more. Said you used the term need to fail. I don't know if you meant to use the term Yeah, need. sometimes we need to fail at some things. You know, uh, you show me the person who rode their um, bicycle on two wheels on the first try, you know, that not many people do. But that failure, that falling, that f the lumps that you got when you did that, and I mentioned bicycle a lot because I like to ride, but, you know, it's those things you remember them and failures are like the little bumps you get along the the, 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 the way of life you, you you know they're not necessarily devastating mm -hmm. they're just things to remind us that it's so much better on the path of um, success mm -hmm. and so to get back to my example once you learn to ride that bicycle and you can ride around Bermuda on two wheels that is that is success but you never forget or you you, you tend to forget really the times you fell or the time when you couldn't ride because that would have been the failure and so I think sometimes we do need to fail in order to succeed um, and uh, we can have a, d a discussion about that <laughs> um, I don't know if you have a long enough time but some t I, I truly believe sometimes you do need to uh, Jerome I happen to know that you are a man of faith does that play a role in whom in who Jerome Wilson is absolutely um, uh, having faith is, is you know permeates through everything we do in life on a day-to-day -day basis so you know you're asking me in the context of work absolutely um, I think it helps me to have perspective it helps me to uh, in my approach to certain things um, it helps me to keep an 
positive um, outlook on any situation. Now, I'm not dealing with life and death situations um, on a daily basis. I'm not, you know, in the medical arena or anything like that. But some of the t some of the things that we do deal with are very important to our clients, mm -hmm. and some of them are very critical and urgent. And so, I think in that context, and I'm framing it in that context, um, my faith allows me to, you know, I, I talk to some of my colleagues and they're always like, you're so calm, you're so relaxed, and they use the word laid back, but, you know, I'm not sometimes bubbling inside is this like, okay, we've got to get this done, but, you know, I just, sometimes you say a word of prayer and just say, you know, God's going to take care of this, and I believe um, strongly that he's put me where I am for a reason. Um, you know, I, it, it wasn't, particularly easy and I could tell you some very funny stories about my studies but there were times when I thought well I'm not gonna this is not gonna be the path that I'm gonna be on and um, here I am and so I strongly believe that you know God has put me where I need to be and all I need to do is just rely upon him and he will continue to take me on and that belief and that outlook helps me, I believe, in my day-to-day -day work. You use another term. You say you feel that God has put you where you need to be. Yeah, absolutely. How do you know that? Well, that's faith. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> just relying on Him. I, I, I don't worry about where I'm going to be. I don't worry about, um, you know, the other things uh, that are, you, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's... I rely upon him to, to dictate our, my, our, my life. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not supposed to be at the job where I, or where I work now, then God can arrange it where I don't have a job. And that's very easy for him to do. But he has continued to, to bless me and to, you know, show my colleagues that what a wonderful thing it is for me to be there and my bosses more particularly. And so... Because of that, um, I just feel that I'm where I'm supposed to be, where I need to be. He always makes us, he always places us where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Because I know you're a little, I know you are successful in terms of some of the things that the world would say is successful. So does faith or does, does your belief in God have any, anything to do with that? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are lots of people um, who have, beliefs in lots of different things um, and they're successful mm -hmm. um, but personally I feel that I am successful and I am able to continue to be successful in my goals and in what I perceive to be success because of God's influence and his guiding hand in my life. Does someone need to have God in their life to be successful? I would say yes from a Christian perspective absolutely and I and I use that because again there are people who are who don't believe as we do as Seventh Day Adventists, mm -hmm. and they're successful. They have good family lives. They have um, they have a good job, and they have things that are important to them where they obtain up to have attained their success. I personally feel that for me to be successful, I need to have God in my life, and 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 because you know it's easy to lose sight of what's gotten you here. It's easy to start to believe in self, and to believe that I've done this, and, and I am the smart person, and I am the person who's you know doing all these wonderful things. And I think uh, personally, no, you know it's it's God and His influence. You know, one of the things that's actually kind of interesting is my colleagues are always like you know you're so humble <laughs> and, I'm like, and I say well you know that's my personality number one and number two it's you know everything can change you know I, I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow's not promised and so I just have to um, work and my approach is predicated on that you know um and, and that's just, to some people, it's strange and they can respect it, but I just think that's the Christian outlook and the, the faith I have that, you knowing that it's not me, it's someone else, it's God. Thank yeah. you so much. We have been talking with Jerome Wilson, um, an attorney at one of the local firms here, and we've been talking about success, we've talked a little bit about his educational uh, journey to become an attorney. We ended up and we heard him say how vital uh, God is to him in terms of attaining success. So we thank Jerome Wilson for being with us and we look forward to seeing you next time.